ان شاء الله لن تقع الـ 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 الاسلحه النوويه في ايدي الامريكان ويستولى عليها المسلمون ويستخدمونها ضد الامريكان باذن الله ولما لا اذا هم يعني فعلوا ما يحقق ذلك نحن ليس عندنا مانع فنحن جزء من أمة الإسلام وأمة الإسلام هم هي أمة الرسالة الخاتمة التي جاءت للبشرية جميعا وهذه الرسالة الخاتمة يعني فيها الأمن والسعادة والسلام والهناء لكل البشرية إذا الأمريكان وافقوا على شروطنا ألا وهي أن يخرجوا من بلاد المسلمين وأن يوقفوا دعمهم للمحتل الغاشم اليهودي في فلسطين ويوقفوا دعمهم للحكومات المرتدة المغتصبة للحكم في بلاد المسلمين ويوقفوا أي اعتداءات على المسلمين ويخرجوا المسجونين من سجونهم فعند ذلك يقف القتال بيننا وبينهم ولكن هذا الوقف ليس وقف دائم يعني هدنة مثلا لعشر سنوات لنقل مثلا ونحن ندعوهم من الآن إلى الدخول في الإسلام فإذا دخلوا في الإسلام انتهى القتال بيننا وبينهم أبدا فإذا لم يدخلوا فنحن إن شاء الله سنسعى لإقامة دولة إسلام والخلافة الإسلامية ثم ندعوهم من جديد إلى الدخول في الإسلام فإن دخلوا فالحمد لله وإن لم يدخلوا ف نفرض عليهم الحكم الإسلامي وعلامة ذلك دفع الجزية وإنهم قبلوا بذلك فأيضا يقف القتال بيننا وبينهم وليس ذلك على الله بعزيز فإن لم يوافقوا على كل ذلك فالقتال سيكون بيننا وبينهم هذه خطة الإسلام في السلام مع الأمريكان ومع غيرهم ونحن لا نظن أنهم سيوافقون على ذلك فلذلك على أمة الإسلام أن يتخذوا هذا الطريق طريق أعداد القوة والجهاد في سبيل الله عز وجل الحمد لله الشيخ أسامة والشيخ أيمن الظواهري حفظهم الله هم في مأمن من يد الأعداء بفضل الله تعالى ولكن طبعا لا يمكن أن نقول أين هم وأصلا نحن لا نعرف أين هم ولكن التواصل فيما بيننا مستمر وهم مطلعون على كل أمور الجهاد سواء كان في أفغانستان أو في الفروع الأخرى للعمل الجهادي فالتواصل فيما بيننا وبينهم تام وأيضا التواصل مع أمير المؤمنين ملا محمد عمر موجود ونلتقي بالإخوة في الإمارة الإسلامية ويبلغون يبلغوننا دائما رسائلهم الرسائل التي تأتي من أمير المؤمنين لنا والتوصيات والنصائح لنا ونحن في النهاية ندعو أمة الإسلام إلى ألا تنسى أفغانستان ونطالب الأمة الإسلامية بزيادة الدعم والتأييد المادي والمعنوي لإخوانهم المجاهدين في أفغانستان فهذه قضية الأمة كلها والجهاد فرض عين على الأمة كلها فعليهم بدعم الجهاد Well, we have asked for a reaction from the Afghan government to those comments and the very presence of Abul Yassid on Afghan soil. As we await the response, let's remind you that just last week, the Afghan president, Hamid Karzai, reiterated his determination to defeat al-Qaeda and the Taliban. In a meeting with his Pakistani counterpart, he said, Pakistan and Afghanistan are united in their battle. Well, let's discuss this further. Michael Griffin is the author of Reaping the Whirlwind, Al-Qaeda and the Holy War. And he joins me now on the line from London. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. So this man, Abul Yassid, is uh, Al-Qaeda's third highest ranking official. Uh, what does that mean? Is he involved in, in planning operations against the West? Well, I think it's very difficult to determine what it does mean, in fact. I mean, he's obviously a man with, with a very interesting record. He's uh, been involved in the assassination uh, of uh, countless important figures, and he's been in, in, in the Afghan zone, let us say, for a long period of time. The extent to which he's actually responsible for any recent al-Qaeda operations or input into Pakistan Taliban operations is very, very hard to distinguish. But I think you could say that a lot of, uh, for example, the assassination of Benazir Bhutto uh, back in, in 2000, 
2007. He claimed responsibility for that. By Tullah Mehsud, the Pakistani Taliban leader, and his colleagues have also claimed responsibility. So it's quite difficult to disentangle responsibilities. Um, what he's saying is a curious, and I think it's a curious mix, really, of uh, bravado and defiance on the one hand, and a certain kind of indication, if you think about the last time Osama bin Laden spoke, which was during uh, President Obama's visit to Cairo, a certain sense of weakness of al-Qaeda. But it's not just talking, is it? I mean, this man gave a sit-down interview. Why would any top-ranking official uh, in, a, in an organization like that uh, take such a security risk? Well, I think the answer to that question is, is, is why does any politician speak about their campaign or, or their intentions? It's to draw attention to themselves. And I think if you think about al-Qaeda at the moment, uh, if they had safe havens and SWAT, they've pretty much vanished along with the entire three million population of SWAT as a result of recent government act, uh, military activities up there. If you look at Waziristan north and south, which is where Osama bin Laden is alleged to be hiding, the, the Pakistan government has indicated its intention to track down Baitullah Mesud there and, and do a kind of a SWAT operation there. So it's kind of al-Qaeda's losing its range of operation. I, I don't think this is a powerful organization, not as powerful an organization as it was, say, last year. So this is a, a, a show of bravado then. Uh, so when he talks about uh, wanting to use Pakistan's nuclear weapons against America, when he talks about retaking Afghanistan, uh, yeah. This, yeah. Is, this is what? A, a, a show of defiance in the face well, of... I mean, I, 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 to be honest, I would say that last year, there was an attack last year, a very effective suicide attack on a town called Wa. 30, 30 miles west of Islamabad, which is one of the main, main nuclear assembly storage areas for the Pakistan military's uh, nuclear capability. This looked very much like it was a Beitullah Mesud, Mesud operation, and it indicated the vulnerability of the areas within Pakistan, which are called the settled areas, as opposed to the, the tribal areas, the settled areas. They could be attacked by the Taliban, and this one particularly had um, a nuclear component. Now, I think... Pakistan six months on, or, or say that was nearly a year ago, nearly a year on, Pakistan is looking much, much less like a failed state than it did last year. So when you say, if we can capture the nuclear weapons in Pakistan, if we can figure out how to assemble them, then we may, might attack America. Well, everybody's known that since 2001. What the interview does demonstrate are the very, uh, or the seemingly close ties between al-Qaeda and the Taliban. Has that always been the case, or have they been pushed together because of the so-called war on terror? Um, I, I think to a large extent that the Taliban in Afghanistan are operating independently of al-Qaeda, except for certain very prestigious operations like attacks on the Hotel Serena or attempts to assassinate um, Hamid Karzai. I think that basically on a day-to-day -day level, on a screwdriver level, attacks are organized by, by local Taliban commanders working in, in kind of a loose, loose cooperation. In, Afghan, in, in Pakistan, much, much more significant attacks, such as the attacks on the Pearl Hotel in, in Peshawar, the destruction of the Marriott, the assassination of Benazir Bhutto, these seem to have much, much more uh, coordination and, and tight planning that really would be available to somebody like Beitullah Mesud, who is virtually illiterate and lives in, in a tribal area. So that's where I think the Taliban and al-Qaeda are working very closely together, much more so than in Afghanistan. Secondly, and this is probably more important, is that when Pakistan, the military in Pakistan, particularly under Musharraf, but subsequently under President Zadari, was making peace agreements with the Taliban in SWAT, Waziristan, Bajawar, other, other of the agencies, they were effectively making peace agreements with al-Qaeda. It had gotten to the point that al-Qaeda and the Pakistan Taliban were so closely identified. Now that the Pakistan Taliban are on the back foot or are being attacked by the military, I think what you'll see and what we've been seeing quite a lot is al-Qaeda are pulling themselves out of Waziristan and they're moving, to, they're moving their men to Somalia and Yemen. Michael, interesting stuff. Thank you for talking to us. Uh, author Michael Griffin speaking to us from London there.